Now let's get going, folks, and we'll be, we will begin as we will every day here on Menzoid Mornings with something that's really grinding my gears. Time now for the Menzoid Monologue. Well, not to sound elitist, but I have zero tolerance for public transit. Oh, sure, there are myriad sights and sounds to be experienced when one is jam-packed into a cattle car designed for homo sapiens, which is, of course, the problem, namely a public transit commute makes it abundantly clear that way too many consumers simply do not pay enough attention to commercials for underarm deodorant and mouthwash. And there's nothing quite like that olfactory sensation of B.O. combined with halitosis mixed in with a dash of curry thanks to that guy off to the side digging into his General Tao chicken dish as if the bus were his own personal motorhome. But I digress. However, my friend Trish... Well, she does love public transit because Trish likes to read and she hates driving on the mean streets of Hogtown. Fair enough. But while Trish thinks that riding the subway and streetcars that make up the Toronto Transit Commission is typically a positive experience, there's one bus driver on one particular route that makes her seethe. You see, if Trish is not at the bus stop and ready to board right away, this driver will not wait. Not even for two seconds, Trish has been mere steps away from the bus, running like an Olympian sprinter, waving her hands maniacally, screaming at the top of her lungs, wait, wait! But this one particular driver, he never waits for her or anyone else. And worst of all, Trish moaned to me, this jerk can see me in his mirror. I know he can, I'll be like 10 feet away but he'll still zoom off like I'm garbage. You know, Trisha's dilemma reminded the menzoid of that classic Bob Newhart comedy sketch in which Newhart plays the role of a bus driving instructor offering pointers to rookie drivers. You pull your bus in, all right, discharge your passengers. Now out of, out of the rear view mirror, you, you'll notice this old woman running for the bus. Yeah, you want, you want to start running, Mr. Selkirk? Let's, let's see how Johnson handles this. You, you, you're, pull, you're pulling out much too fast, Johnson. Hold it. Hold it. Yeah, she gave up halfway up in the block that time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what you want to do is just kind of gradually ease out, you know, and you're, you're kind of always holding out the hope they can catch up with the bus. You know what I mean? <laughs> Of course, Newhart was playing that for laughs, whereas poor Trisha's dilemma, it's as real as it gets. Indeed, last Monday, thanks to the driver not waiting for Trish to catch up, she was consequently late for an appointment. Says she, I had to wait almost 15 minutes for the next bus because that jerk wouldn't wait five seconds. Every other driver waits, but not this guy. Trish besieged me to talk to the public transit version of Speedy Gonzales. Trish gave me a route map with the times and a description of the driver. Namely, the guy is a dead ringer for Star Trek's Mr. Spock. Well, the Manzoid went to the bus stop and sure enough, the pseudo Vulcan was right there, right on time. I boarded the bus and told Spock that he was really making things hellacious for Trish thanks to his uber rigid ways. In fact, the soup Nazi of Seinfeld came to mind. <laughs> Medium turkey chili. <laughs> Medium crab bisque. <laughs> I didn't get any bread. Just forget it, let it go. Excuse me, uh, I think you forgot my bread. Bread? Two dollars extra. Two dollars? But everyone in front of me got free bread. You want bread? Yes, please. Three dollars! <laughs> what? No soup for you! <laughs> <laughs> well, Bus Nazi informed me that he would not speak while the bus was moving, as per policy. But if I stayed on the bus until the end of the line, he would talk to me during his 10-minute break, so I perched myself upon the well-worn seat made from fine Carnithian vinyl and rode the bus until the end of the line. The scent of curry, B.O., and death filled my nostrils. When the bus pulled into the depot, I finally got a chance to vent. What's the matter with you, I asked the guy. Can't you even wait an extra five seconds for my friend Trish to get on the bus? Sir, he began, people who ride the bus go by the public transit bus schedule if I am to be at a certain stop at, say, 
4.42 p.m., that is when I should be there at 4.42, not 4.43 or 4.44 or 4.45. Now, you say your friend only needed five seconds. Very well, I stopped my bus for five extra seconds to allow your friend on. But then there's another man running for the bus at the next stop. He needs 25 seconds. Then there's that old lady with the cane. She needs 30 seconds. I wait for them all, let's say. And then you know what happens with just those three passengers? That is a minute of extra time consumed. Now, I do not get to the 442 bus stop at 442. I get there at 443. But that's just three tardy passengers, right? What if it's 10 passengers or 30 who want me to wait? Now the schedule is worthless. It gets worse. That person who was on time at 442 and expects to be at his destination at 510, well, he is now picked up at 449 and arrives at 517. He is now seven minutes late. And why? He was on time. So those passengers that follow the schedule and make sure they are at the bus stop at the proper time are penalized. And the few tardy people who are late are the ones rewarded. That is madness, sir. At this point, I had an epiphany, which is to say the bus driver He's right. In fact, his logic reminded me of a famous Mr. Spock quote uttered during the Vulcan's death scene in Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. See what we can learn from Star Trek, folks? Yes, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. And I later told Trish that she's wrong. The bus driver is right. And she should stop thinking the whole freaking world revolves around her. Alas, Trish is now giving me the silent treatment. So be it. But the menzoid knows one thing for sure. He now looks upon the soup Nazi in a whole new and endearing light. And that's the menzoid monologue.